Teller here, and if you, like me, happen to live in the United States of America, maybe you already heard the news. We have a brand new federal holiday! What are we celebrating? We're celebrating Juneteenth! Wow! And that's a really big deal! It is a big deal, because do you know what's a big deal about a federal holiday? Yeah, I do, I do, I do, because I want to be future president. True. That it, that it celebrates an important historical moment in American history that we have to stop to think about and remember and honor. That's right. And Juneteenth is only the 11th holiday, federal holiday that we are getting. Before that, the one that we got before that was years ago. Uh, holiday number 10 was which one, Green Bear? I know, I know, I know, I know this one. That guy. We celebrate that guy. That's right. That guy is Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, and, but, yeah, it's a huge one, that, but that one passed like, like a long time ago. Yes, back in the 1980s. And now, as of 2021, we have a brand new one. And you ready to read about it? Yeah, because we have to know how to celebrate it properly. That's right, because every holiday is celebrated in a different way. And the one thing that they all have in common, though, is that schools close and banks close and post offices close because it is our way of pausing to honor that moment in history, shall we? Let's see how we celebrate Juneteenth and why we celebrate Juneteenth. And right there, the book is already giving us a clue. Freedom! And here we go. Let's celebrate June 19th. That's right, Juneteenth is really like short for June 19th. People are outside, they are having fun, they dance, they eat barbecue, they drink strawberry pop, kids play games, people listen to speeches. What are they celebrating? It's Juneteenth. That's right, June 19th, Juneteenth. The day that commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. Now, I checked out this really pretty flag right here because I was like, hey, what is this flag right here? Remember, Juneteenth is still relatively young in our history, that term for us to hear, because even though it's been around forever and ever and ever, it was sort of kind of limited to Texas for a long time and people growing up outside of that area didn't know about it because, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but Juneteenth was born in Texas. So this flag right here, let me tell you about it. That is the June Juneteenth flag, and it's more than meets the eye. For example, notice that they use the colors red, white, and blue, just like the American flag. Notice that they have one star. Who else has one star? Yeehaw! Texas, the Lone Star State, has one star on its flag. So, like I said, Juneteenth was born in Texas. That star symbolizes Texas. It also symbolizes freedom for slaves. And then, do you notice the star around the star? You notice that? That symbolizes a nova, like a new star being born. That's the new hope being born. And one last piece of heavy symbolism that we can read into these pictures because I'm telling you, sometimes a picture is really a thousand words. This part right here that looks almost like a sun rising against the sky, it's a new dawn, a new dawn for black people in America. Here we go. What was slavery? Back in the 1600s and 1700s, black people were stolen from their homes in Africa. They were brought to the American colonies and enslaved. They were forced to work without pay. They worked in fields, they worked in homes. Enslavers split up black families, treated them badly. Now in the Northern United States, enslaved people often worked in cities. In the South, most of them worked on large farms and they called them plantations. Now, some people were against enslaving people and they thought it was wrong. In 1808, Congress stepped in and it said enslaved people could no longer be brought into the country. That basically shut down the slave deals, right? Coming from outside, you'd think, but not quite. Slavery continued in the South. Enslavers there claimed that they needed the labor of the unpaid workers. By 1860, there were nearly 4 million enslaved people in the U.S. Now, there were a lot of people in the North that wanted to end slavery, but most people in the South did not. The fight over slavery grew, and in 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected president. He was against slavery and wanted to make it against the law. So, is he going to be able to do it? 
not before a little something we call the Civil War. Mm -hmm. This started a war in 1861, the Civil War. States in the North were part of the Union. They did not want slavery. States in the South were in the Confederacy, and that was the flag they took on in, by leaving America behind and wanting to be their own country. They felt like they had to split away from the United States and form their own country called the Confederate States of America that would allow slavery. But Abraham Lincoln said, no, 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 no. You can't go anywhere. We are the United States of America. That's what led to the war. Chapter three, you are free. President Lincoln did not want anyone to be enslaved. So January 1st, 1863, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation. You will definitely study that in school when you're bigger. It said all enslaved people in the Confederacy were free. But, but, states in the Confederacy, remember that the Southern half that did not want um, to give up slavery? They did not want to follow this Emancipation Proclamation that Abraham Lincoln had okayed. And Texas was part of this Confederacy. Around 250,000 people were slaves there. And the enslavers, the slave owners in Texas, did not tell their workers that they were free. So they were free technically, but they didn't know. Nope, they had no idea. So it was like they, they, they were still slaves because they didn't know they were free because slavery, they, they were still living like that. Exactly. So shall we go on? Because this is where Juneteenth is born. Yeah, okay, okay. All right. The enslaved people finally found out more than two years later. That's right, two years later. They had been free for two years. On June 19th, 1865, General Gordon Granger rode into town. He led Union Army soldiers to Galveston, Texas. The soldiers went there to take back the state. They brought a special message from the president. You are free. General Granger read order number three. It said, the people of Texas are informed that all slaves are free. And can you imagine the celebration that broke out? They cheered, they prayed, they sang, they danced. Wait, that, that must have been like the most exciting thing ever. I know. Can you imagine to learn that you are free at last? I mean, this was huge. And some people actually just picked up and left Texas right away. They went to find family in the North. Remember how I mentioned that um, families were sometimes split up uh, by the slave owners? They would split up families, so they went to find one another. And, and they went where they were welcome. A lot of people went to the North because the North had already outlawed slavery many, many years before, and they wanted to go there to find opportunities. And it says here in the little blue circle, in December of 1865, the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was passed, and it said that slavery was against the law. Chapter 4, Early Juneteenth Celebrations. Now, people call Juneteenth different things. Now, remember, Juneteenth is when every last slave knew he was free. So that was like the true freedom day for all slaves, right? Now, they call Juneteenth different things. They call it Jubilee Day or Freedom Day, Emancipation Day. Emancipation, like the Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipation meaning freedom. The word Juneteenth comes from June and 19th. It was the day that all enslaved people were freed. So, so even though some people already knew and were free, this is when it really counted because everybody was free? Exactly, that makes it official. Okay, official. The first Juneteenth celebration took place in Texas, back to the Lone Star State, in 1866. Freed men, women, and kids gathered. They prayed, they sang, ate, marched, some wore new clothes because that's a really great tradition to do on a holiday. The clothes stood for their new freedom. More communities joined in. Several groups bought land. This land was used to celebrate Juneteenth. They called the land Emancipation Park. The celebration spread. People outside of Texas joined in. Many in the U.S. celebrated. Many in the world celebrated. See? So even though it started in Texas, it started to spread. Because why wouldn't you want to get in on a celebration of freedom? 
Chapter 5. It becomes a state holiday. Now, here's the interesting part because you might think, oh, Juneteenth, that's so cool. We should be celebrating it all the time. I bet people wanted to make it a holiday since forever. Not quite. Juneteenth wasn't as popular in the 1960s. African Americans focused on other things, like fighting for their civil rights. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who has his own federal holiday, he was one of the many people leading the fight, and he wanted black people to have the same rights as white people, like the ability to vote, access to a good education, fair trials. So it wasn't until the 1970s that Juneteenth became popular again. Texas made Juneteenth a state holiday in 1980, but some people wanted it to be a national holiday. Back when he was senator, former President Barack Obama tried to make it a national holiday. And then it tells here that 47 states officially celebrate Juneteenth and other countries celebrate it using the day to mark the end of slavery, celebrating the stories of African Americans and honoring all they have done. But since this book was published, it became a federal holiday observed nationally. So even though uh, just a short time ago, 47 states were officially celebrating it, now that it's a federal holiday, everybody stops and pauses and will learn about it. Because it used to be that mostly kids in Texas would hear about it because again, since Texas is where Juneteenth was born, that's where you really heard about it. So it was more like local history, but now that it's a federal holiday, it will become part of American history lessons that we all hear about everywhere, no matter where you live. Chapter six, Juneteenth celebrations. So what happens on Juneteenth? Well, everybody does it a little differently, kind of like any holiday. You put your own spin on it. Celebrations can be one day, they can be a week, they could be a month, a month. People eat together and they eat. Now this is interesting, and I just learned this, red food and drinks. Watermelon, strawberries, red soda, because red is a symbol of freedom. What about red velvet cake? It's really chocolate, but it's like red also. Also an excellent Juneteenth choice, Green Bear. Oh, excellent. And storytelling, what? is a big part of Juneteenth celebrations. Stories that remind people about the first days of freedom. Red foods represent freedom. And I like to share the stories too, because I mean, that's how we learn, that's how we pass on traditions, that's how we pass on how important things are. And gosh, what can be more important than stories about freedom and fulfilling your destiny, you know? People also go fishing, they play baseball, they listen to speeches, they learn about the past, they dream about the future, they pray, they sing. In some places, people put on plays and they act out the day that General Granger rode to Texas. That's what we call a reenactment. There are parades, bands play music, dancers dance, museums hold events. Some companies give employees a day off. People register to vote. Ah. And now we get into the part where we have some specific things that people do on Juneteenth. There's this poem that was turned into a song that is called Lift Every Voice and Sing. And it is often coined as the Black National Anthem. And this is a beautiful song. And in fact, you know what I'll do? I'll find a really good version of it and put it in the link down below so you can hear it because it is a beautiful and long song. And here, is the Poetry Corner. And this is a poem, beautiful poem, written by her, Ellen Watkins Harper. Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. And she was a teacher and an abolitionist. Abolitionist is a word for somebody who works to end slavery. And she had written this beautiful poem and was actually one of the first African-American women to be published in the United States. And this is her poem, and I'm gonna read it because it's really beautiful. Bury me in a free land. Make me a grave wherever you will, in a lonely plain or a lofty hill. Make it among earth's humblest graves, but not in a land where men are slaves. I could not rest if around my grave I heard the steps of a trembling slave. His shadow above my silent tomb would make it a place of fearful gloom. I could not rest 
if I heard the tread of a coffle gang to the shambles led, and the mother's shriek of wild despair rise like a curse on the trembling air. I could not sleep if I saw the lash drinking her blood at each fearful gash, and I saw her babes torn from her breast like trembling doves from their parents' nest. I'd shudder and start if I heard the bay of bloodhounds seizing their human prey, and I heard the captive plead in vain as they bound afresh his galling chain. If I saw young girls from their mother's arms bartered and sold for their youthful charms, my eye would flash with a mournful flame, my death pale cheek grow red with shame. I would sleep, dear friends, where bloated might can rob no man of his dearest right. My rest shall be calm in any grave where none can call his brother a slave. I ask no monument, proud and high, to arrest the gaze of the passers-by. All that my yearning spirit craves is bury me not in a land of slaves. So even in death, she wanted to be in a land of the free. And isn't that what everyone wants? So kid, how do you celebrate Juneteenth? There are events you can go to just like the 4th of July. There could be parades, there could be parties and picnics. And one of my favorite things though, is to maybe write a poem yourself or a song, or maybe just a small writing about what freedom means to you. And I know what freedom means to me. <laughs> it means that you can vote for me, Green Bear for President. That is just one of the many things that freedom means to me. It means that I can go where I want to go. I can follow my dreams, whatever they may be. And, and, and you, can, you can like eat what you want. Yeah, that's one part of freedom. And, and you can go travel if you want somewhere, even if it's somewhere far away. Yeah, I don't have to ask for permission. I just have to go if I want to go. Yeah, I like that. I, I like freedom and, and I like this Juneteenth. I like that we're all going to celebrate it now because it sounds like a beautiful holiday about letting freedom ring for everybody. And I also like that flag that symbolizes a new dawn. I know, it's beautiful. A bright star, a new beginning. And even though it was specifically for the African Americans who were enslaved, it is beautiful for all of us to think about a new dawn, a new beginning where everybody can be the best that they can be because no matter what color you are, green, green, or, or you know, uh, like pink. Yeah, like me, pink. Exactly, or purple, or blue, or brownish, or, you know, whatever your color might be, it is a better world when we all get to be the very best versions of ourselves, right? And that can only happen where, you guys? In a land of the free, where we can all be free to be the very best pink bear or green bear or kid that you can be.